So another very common method to use is diffusion maps. And this is much more common than ICA nowadays because diffusion maps is a nonlinear dimensionality reduction uh, algorithm as well. And basically, uh, you will try to find the distance between points A and B as defined at the probability of going from one point to another using a number of steps. So imagine that you have the, the point one here and you want to go to point six. And here you have, for example, like this radius probability of, of going from one this point one to another. So I can go to point six through point two if I include just like two steps, one and two. So the probability for going to one to six in two steps is 0 0.2, let's say. Or if I use three steps, then I can go from four to five to six, or I can go to four, uh, one to four, four to seven, seven to six. So I have a higher probability of going in that direction, right? Oops, sorry. So, so here, uh, there are these two probabilities of going from one point to another via these intermediate points. Um, if I increase, for example, four steps, then I can go one, two, three, four, or like one, two, no, three, four, here will be five steps, for example. But then yeah, that's the, the general idea. So the idea of uh, diffusion maps is transform these probabilities of going from one point to another or connecting those points in a, in a, in a line, let's say, uh, and transform those probabilities into distance. So the distance, the difference in distance between the points, for example, A and B in this, in this graph here, based on these proximities, would, uh, via an intermediate uh, point C, if the probability of this intermediate point that lies in the middle is exactly the same, like if the probability of going from C to B and A to C is the same, that means that I can go from A to B in this, in this trajectory. So that means that A and B are connected together um, via this point C. And then after this, uh, you can do dimensionality reduction just like as in, in PCA. And then you have also the different uh, contributions of every dimension uh, that are more important. So you can filter which uh, uh, diffusion maps are the, the most important or which components are more important. So here's a representation of a diffusion map. Usually you have like these uh, streaks in one of the components indicating one of these in, uh, processes that are in the data that are independent. So for example, this could be, for example, uh, some uh, progenitor cells, and then they go in, into this kind of blob. And this blob or this group of cells can be differentiated later from uh, another component perspective. So there are many components, three, four, five, that can um, separate those cells into different uh, uh, lines. So here in, in, the, in the bottom, you can see, for example, the diffusion maps from, from another data set that you can go from one line here and then bifurcate or trifurcate in this case. Here as well, you have a multifurcation of cells, and then they go into these, these trajectories. So here is a quite recent paper um, showing also using diffusion maps for trajectory analysis. So the summary is that these distances in the diffusion maps are, is, are measured in probability. So that is much more meaningful that, for example, using the, the U map, which are measuring the distances between the, the cells, because then it, since uh, you are accounting for probability, you are not creating like, like in UMAP or TSNE that you just want to separate your clusters, but you want to find the intermediate cells that are connecting the clusters as well. But of course, even for the diffusion maps, you need to have the transitional cells in your data set. So make sure that you have those cells there.